Rada, Rada. I, I forgot, True Fin Fan. Thank you for the love and the super chat. Appreciate it. He says, what tells to me is the truth. You bring it always. Thank you, sir. We try to stay as level-headed as possible on this show. So let me ask uh, Marcel Louis Jacques here, see if he gives me a level-headed answer or that weak answer <laughs> that Poupart just gave me. Are the Dolphins a playoff team? Yeah, I mean, the talent-wise, sure. Talent wise, sure. And you made the playoffs last year with a worse roster, so the expectation is always going to be you. you have to be a playoff, you're a playoff team the next. The division got a lot tougher. Poopart Poop called it a borderline playoff deal. I'm like, are you crazy, bro? You added Vic Fangio. That, and, and healthy, you, you should be a playoff team. You know what I'm saying? So now I'm going to hold Allen to his feet to the fire now. If the Dolphins well, don't make the playoffs, Allen can't rip Mike McDaniel anymore because he said they were a borderline. So they either making it or not making it is not a surprise to him. To me, it would be an absolute shocker if you're healthy and you don't make the playoffs. I get it if you have a whole bunch of injuries and, you know, Armstead's out and two or whatever, and you fall short and don't make the playoffs, even though you kind of overcame that last year, I don't think you'll do it again. That's kind of hard. But if you're healthy, I got to tell you something, Marcel. There's no reason you shouldn't make the playoffs. Yeah, the there reason is. why I think the borderline qualifier is there is because the AFC is a hard, a tough conference. The AFC East is the best division within that conference. There's probably three teams that will make the playoffs or should make the playoffs this season. That's so. Like, if they didn't make the playoffs, I don't think I would be shocked per se. Like, I, I'd be a little surprised, but like. I don't think I would be like, oh my God, this is the, this is a travesty. Like I, I, would, I would be, call, I would call it a travesty if it's not injuries. Like, well, travesty. you know, if it's not injuries, yeah. If it's just poor play, if Tua is healthy all seventeen games, if Tyreek and Waddle are healthy, if that defense stays relatively intact, like we're talking reasonable injuries, you know. Oh, if healthy, then yeah, oh, it would wait. be a travesty. If not, like it's the margins pretty thin. Margin's right. pretty thin in this conference and division. I, that, that's fine. If you're, like, but I that's my point. If you're healthy, if you're healthy, brother, you got to make the playoffs. I don't give a shit. Yeah. You better make the playoffs. Yeah. I see, where, I, do, I see where he's coming from. I don't particularly agree. Of course. But not. if, yeah, if healthy, there's a little, there's some. Uh, so I got a healthy X now. I got a healthy X now. I can need him back. I'm going to get Trill back. I'm going to get Jalen Ramsey back at some point this year. David Long, they added to the defense. Uh, you know, you, you tell me if they stay healthy, give me a break, bro. This is a this is a 12 win team if they stay healthy. That's what I think. I'm not. See, here's the thing. Are you in this panic mode too now because of the 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 shakiness of some of the things that happened after preseason game one? No, I mean, Tua didn't play three starting offensive linemen, didn't play the top two receivers, didn't play, like, come on. Right. <laughs> it's it's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Not to mention, yeah. I mean, they, uh, I mean, it was, well, it was 19 to three, and Atlanta didn't really do much from most of that first half, or from most of the game. It, punt return and a pick six. That's right. 14 points right there. Right. Well, you know what? What I could or, judge was technically not because I guess they missed the extra point. So thirteen points. A couple of bad decisions by the QBs. I can judge that because you could have made a better decision at that moment, and so that I could judge. But overall, I'm not. I'm not here in the panic mode. And no, let, let me see yeah, how honest you'll be here. let me see how honest you'll be here because I've been at it for a long time, and all the way from the Shula days into Jimmy. And you had your two a days, you had your hitting, you had your tackling, um, and into one step a little bit. And then after that, it started to change a little bit more of the practices. Um, I believe years ago you could get a real feel for what your team is going to be. I don't believe any writer, any reporter nowadays gets a true feel for any football team until you're into the regular season, maybe a month in because there just isn't enough hitting or tackling at all for your starters in the preseason and in training camp for you to really get a measurement of how good your team is going to be, yay or nay? No, yeah, I mean, it, it takes a few – it does take a few games. It does take a few games. I think, like, 
but that's for us, like for us to figure out what this team is. Coaches and staff in front of they should they know what they've got already. They know what they have. Like you've been around so. the game long enough that the preseason and not hitting and training camp, like that doesn't really, you know, I don't believe it, that's not as big of a shock for questions. It's not I, like as big right of a shock now, for guys who do this. Wait, wait, hold on. Let me give you an example. Right now, you've got you brought in some extra bodies to try to compete for left guard and right tackle. Those guys aren't really hitting enough to really find out how good they're going to be. So you and, and you haven't even been around Eichenberg and Jackson enough to really know how they're going to be in a game like situation. Yeah, but oh, this, isn't, this isn't OTAs, you know, this isn't OTAs in minicamp. Like, the, the, the pads are popping in, in training camp. Like, that's that's true. That's not part. It's that's maybe the only place on the field where like the physicality is on the same level as a as an actual game. It was they can go, they can throw hands, they can pop, they can you know wrestle in that. They they can do whatever they want in that line of scrimmage because they're not bringing those. They're not bringing each other to the ground. You know, like they're not tackling alignment to the ground. You're not tackling a DM. But like guys are getting pancake. Guys are getting tossed. Guys are getting bull rushed. Like it's no like physicality wise. <laughs> Is you not enough. Of, no, I get it, but there, I don't believe that they know because there isn't enough of that to set you up in a game like situation. That's why you'll see all kinds of changes once the season starts because they just really haven't figured that out yet. Like at this point, I don't think they really know yet who the left guard is. Maybe Austin actually, Austin, Austin actually didn't play bad in the uh, in the preseason game. So maybe, and he needs more of those kind of situations like in a game to kind of lock it up. The left guard one is kind of a little bit up in the air, you know, right now. Speaking of that, what do you think is going on at left guard? I think we eventually see Isaiah win at left guard to start the season. Um, I think that's I think that's where we are. Like, Liam, it's, it's a surprise to an extent because coming into that 21 draft, like he was a fringe first rounder, you know, he was seen as one of the best tackle prospects yeah. available, like, and the good lineage, good, the, you know, the Notre Dame, you can go a lot worse than drafting a lineman from Notre Dame. Like that is usually money in the bank. It's like a Bama yeah. receiver can't miss, but uh, it, it just hasn't, it hasn't been there. It hasn't been there. And I gave him the benefit of the doubt as a rookie because they put him at three different positions benefit of the doubt uh you know a little bit more last year because he's still getting used to to playing inside but man it's just not it's not getting better and you know at year three you kind of know you kind of know who you are you know especially at a position like that it's not an offer it's not an issue of opportunity or extended run he's got plenty of both so uh, i i would expect probably isaiah win i can't say who's been playing where but like that is my that is my guess if you know put me on the plank, walk the plank, or make a decision. Like that's the decision I made. Were you surprised that they kept cotton so much on the right side and didn't try him more on the left? Uh not not necessarily. Like that's kind of what preseason is about. I did like what Mike said at one point um uh, after the game that preseason is more about the process than the result. So like you want to win a game because you're competitive, but like ultimately this is a time to see how guys respond in certain game situations. So like see what you've got with him on the right side, mix and match your linemen, see what, where guys are more comfortable. Like that's, that's, that's fine for preseason. Like I, I think the stakes are pretty low. Well, where are we injury wise? What do you know about some of the guys banged up? Uh, Cam Smith was at practice yesterday, you know, no red shirt on, but they weren't in pads. So you got to take that with a grain of salt. You got to monitor what he's what he's going to be able to do in Houston this you week. Don't you, don't him, you don't need a red shirt. You don't you don't you don't need a red shirt when there's no contact practice, right? So it's just Yeah, right? exactly. So like that's full you need full shirt? context. He was there, the shirt was aqua I had to remember that because y'all got on my ass last time about Teal versus Aqua. I think it's semantics, but whatever. And the jersey was Aqua, and uh, you know he did uh, he did participate in individual position drills. He didn't do team drills, but again, it was a half speed practice without without pads on. 
Uh, Brandon Jones, Alec Ingold also didn't practice. It's kind of a new trend for Jones, who was like starting to, you know, angle back into being full a full go. Uh, I'm sure it's just monitoring. It's just monitoring sure. that uh, that ACL. Yeah, but uh, yeah. still no need him as well. Obviously no Ramsey. Um, what else? I think there's still one injury that he might have. You know, he might have. Uh, so he. By the way, with Brad, most. By the way, just to, just to kind of fill in. Sometimes these guys have some uh, swellness or or soreness uh, in their. You know, when they're coming back from some of these things. And so instead of continuing to push through it, what you do is you give them rest and alleviate it because you don't want it. You know, it's a ligament that you already tore. You don't need to tear it again. So you kind of want to bring them back slowly until the ligament starts to respond naturally where there isn't soreness or swelling. I'm not saying that there was, by the way, I, I'm just throwing it out there because sometimes that's part of the process, folks. It's nothing bad. It's just kind of part. We all heal differently. Some people are freakish, and some people it takes a little while more. That's all. Waddle. You know? Waddle. Yes. Uh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. He can't. He he's uh look, look here. No, no, we can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. We can't hear you. Mute. You've been muted. Mute. There we go. We good? There. There you go. Now start yeah, again. It lost, with it, uh, it lost service for a bit. But uh, go ahead. Go ahead. Daniel told us as much the other day. Like Waddle's not a guy who they need to rush back into getting reps. He had an excellent camp before he was hurt. I would consider him effectively shut down for the preseason. Like you don't risk it. Have not seen him at practice. I will not be in Houston this week. So monitor. You know some of my colleagues for that. Um, I'll probably get reports from our guy, DJ B enemy down there, but, um, yeah, I wouldn't expect to see Waddle for the preseason. I also don't think it's something that's going to linger into the year. I, if, if I had to guess, if I had to bet Cam Smith and Jalen Waddle, both fine for week one. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, Wilkins, where are we with the Wilkins situation? See, this is where it, it gets a little – it is getting a little interesting. He hasn't participated in team drills the past two practices. We're getting to that point where it's like, you know, if, if I'm the if I'm in the Wilkins camp, I'm saying, hey, man, I, I did my I, – I held up my end. I showed up for OTAs. I was there for mini camp. I was there for training camp. I bust my ass every day. I'm one of the best – I'm having the best camp of anybody on this team. Where's my deal? Uh, everybody else in the league is getting signed. Where's my deal? So, like, it is getting to that point where, you know, if any dissent were to arise, that, like, it might be about now. But there's still three weeks until the season starts, three, four weeks until yeah. the season starts. There is still time to get this thing done. I would still – that's where I'm leaning. I'm leaning toward it getting done by week one rather than lingering into the season. You don't want to risk, you know, having a franchise in the next year or creating some sort of dissent in the locker room, like – yeah, it's just I'm, that you, you – I'm sure this deal will get right, done. Cross your T's, all of that. Yeah, Marcel, you touched on it right there at the end. I'm sure this deal will get done because you do not want to send this message in that locker room. This is the guy that has sold out completely for your franchise. And, and if you don't sell out for him, then nobody is going to trust you and sell out for you again. So yeah, I, am, I am 100% sure – that this deal will get done. I just I just think that these these dudes are really smart and they're trying to design things in a way where he gets paid, but they're also kind of protected too in a way where they don't overcommit to a sense that they're put somewhere. I think they want to make sure that they have some kind of flexibility with the deal. And so that's why these things are way more complicated than what it looks like. And that's what I think is... is is taking the time now. It's just putting this whole deal together is not that easy for them, and that's because these guys are they're creative as hell. You know, they're they're the home they're the they're the home of uh, of the two year deal and how they're able to you know uh, snake guys in there and and keep them and control them and 
And they've done things with some of their deals already recently where they've stayed kind of flexible, including X, you know, where they stayed kind of flexible and they were still able to give them money and those kind of things. I think there's a sense of that going on. But the message you would send by not signing Christian uh, Christian Wilkins would be catastrophic, my brother. Okay. Yeah, it's that. This is the new Dolphins. This is the new Dolphins. It's not supposed to be. It's not the Minka right. Fitzpatrick, Laramie Tunsil, Bobby Mc. You know, the, the getting get rid of your own, get rid of your home going guys. Dolphins. Like this is supposed to be a new era. Again, yeah. I, I I would. We talk about shock versus surprised. I would be shocked and surprised if the deal doesn't get done with Christian. I would be too. I would be absolutely floored and d- disappointed in the front office because this is not going to help them. This would hurt them immensely because that guy is as liked and respected in that locker room. And he's one of those kind of guys that you don't want to face and you want him on your team every single <laughs> week. Uh, yeah. I, I'm a huge person. The- I'm sorry. I, I, I think he deserves his money and I'll give him his 20 million because I, I think he helps you. We're too in love with sacks, and we think that that's the end-all, be-all when it's really not at that position. It's just that there happens to be a couple of freaks at that position that actually produce more sacks. But I think actually his sack numbers will go up as time goes on because he has not played with great ends lately, and that's what he needs. He needs the two ends to be great this year, and I think that'll open it up for him a little bit more. That's just me. Yeah. We'll yeah, I mean, he's already – he's one of the best run defenders in the league. It's more the there's more to the game than rushing the passer. Yeah. No, and, and I I just think that those numbers automatically uh will will end up um improving overall. Um joint practices, uh what are you expecting this week? Do you think Tua plays? Because I still think he doesn't. I still think they hold him out for week three when it's all said I do and not. done. I, think, I don't think I, I don't think the arms plays. I don't think they'll play Armstead two weeks in a row. I only think they're going to play him once, and I think that's when they'll play Tua in the third week. So you think he'll play this week? I think that he plays. I think he gets a series or two this week just to get his feet wet, you know, dip his toe in the water, and then I think he gets probably close to a quarter um, in the third week of the preseason. He hasn't played since December. This isn't your normal. You know what I mean? Like, this isn't your normal quarterback situation, playoff quarterback situation where, like, it's it's been a long time. I mean, granted, you know, the difference between January and December is not much, but like it's still been a long time since he's been he's been able to play. Plus, there's the mental excuse me, the mental side of like getting those live reps back in uh, for a guy who's knocked out of, I think, three games, four games last year, maybe even five. I mean, some of them he came back, but like what was yeah, the, the San Francisco, Cincy. Buffalo and chaos. So it, it's just three. It's just three. He got hurt in four, but he got knocked out of three. Uh, but either way, like he needs these reps. He needs these reps. I don't, I'm not saying play him for a full half. I'm not saying give him the Russell Wilson treatment, but he does need some reps. I, the precedent we've seen from Mike McDaniel is that Tua will play in game two and three of the preseason. That's what I expect. Um, Mike White. Uh, it looked like Skyler looked uh, like he might have had a little bit of a lead in the mini camps. Then uh, training camp started. People got there, and then Mike White pulled away. Did Mike White yes. come back to the pack now with Skyler after the performance on Saturday? No, because Skyler didn't help himself very much either. Uh, I like I like Skyler a lot. Uh, you know, always so humble, so uh, insightful, but. He didn't help himself very much. He tried to do a little too much. You got knocked out. No, 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 no. You got knocked out. There we go. He he. It looks like he he seems like an eighty year old person trying to work a smartphone. Can't figure it out. He's trying. See, he's talking, but no, no, no. We can't hear you, bro. We can't hear you. So it's a silent movie now. There we go. Now there we go. Yeah, I keep, it keeps like losing connection, and I don't know, but whatever. 
Uh, Scott, the gist of it, Skyler didn't really help himself either. Processing speed was too slow once again. It was. It, it looked a little more like his last year training camp than it did an early training camp, you know, rather than a guy who started a playoff game on the road. Uh, and Mike White has been pulling away every single day of training camp, of training camp yeah. specifically. Yeah, training camp, sure. so yeah, it, sure. it, it's been yeah. – it's been nice, especially when it's like literally when fans got there. It, it, it's yeah. almost like he was screwing with us. But <laughs> but his, bug, but his bugaboo been rendered untrue. But his bugaboo showed up in that game, which he still turns over the ball more than he scores touchdowns. So it's not supposed to be that way. He's got to turn that thing around and throw a hell of a lot more touchdowns than he throws interceptions, and that's the one thing that he's got to kind yeah. of uh, he did. Know, stay away from. He made a good point, though. I mean, they, they got to the red zone three times. Um, obviously, one of those was an interception. The other, uh, you know, he was, a, he was a little late, I think, on the pass to Berrios. But he made a good point after the game in that in the preseason, they don't have, like, a red zone package. You know, there's no scouting report on what they're going to run. They have no set list of plays. So, like, they're kind of just out there winging it. They should be able. 10 yard line, they should be able to score. Don't get me wrong. But like, I get, I, I give you a little bit of leniency there because there's no, there's no game plan. You're just over there, like, okay, let's see what works. But I Follow think he's still clear number two. Well, let's hope so. Let's see what happens at the end. But it looks like Mike White is going to end up being the number two. Uh, follow him on Twitter at Marcel underscore LJ. And catch his work there at ESPN. Marcel, we will catch up later in the week, my friend. Thank you. Appreciate you. Sir, take it easy. You got it. Marcel Louis Jacques, Welton Realm is the law firm that you want to call. They are a Hall of Fame law firm, actually. Jeff and Dan are Hall of Famers. By the way, we might hear from Dan on Thursday. We're going to talk about that new um, insurance uh, law that uh, DeSantis passed which is not helping you, okay? Just want you to know that. Uh, but anyway, call Welton Realm at 954-966-4646. Anywhere in South Florida, anywhere in the state, man, you can call. Homeowner property damage, condo damage. Folks, we are in hurricane season. And if you have some, if you have criminal defense, business owner claims, commercial litigation, personal injury, or damage because of a storm, you want to call Welton Realm first before you call the insurance companies. The insurance companies are not looking out for you. Their adjusters are not looking out for you. They're looking out for their insurance company. So make sure you call Welton Realm. They have their own adjusters, and they will bring these insurance companies to their knees like Progressive. And Welton Realm did that for us when we had a bunch of kids go right through our wall of our house, and we had a gaping hole in our wall. Well, guess what? Welton Realm crushed progressive and that terrible number that they were offering us and which wasn't enough money to fix everything and put it back to normal again which floor by florida law they have to do it 954-966-4646 you call welton realm and tell them that big o sent you jeff and dan are waiting 954-966-4646 This is the big old show.